Hi everybody, Jason Wright here with Sourcefire's Product Management. I want to talk to you a little bit today about our application control capabilities and give you a quick demo of the functionality that you can deploy either as a next generation IPS or as a next generation firewall. Either way, you can deploy application control and you'll have the advantages that I'm going to show you here. So if I log into our Firesight Management Console, you'll notice here the first thing is that we have a very firewall-esque type of layout here. Uh, whether you're deploying as an IPS or as a firewall, you'll have the advantage of, of this kind of view. And the first thing you'll notice is we can name all of our rules and we can even classify our rules. Here we got some administrator rules and some DMZ rules here. These rules are very easy to move around. I can grab them and move them up and down in terms of priority or different classifications. But if I go into adding a rule, I'll show you some of the capabilities. The first thing here is that you got all of your different ways that you can control your policy, whether it's by zones or networks or VLANs, uh, your users because we tie into your user infrastructure, your directory infrastructure, uh, even applications that I'll dive deeper into, more traditional based port policies, and uh, even URL policies and IPS policies can all be set in a single rule here. So I'm going to skip the zone policy and go into the networks here and show you a little bit. Uh, let's say, for example, that I want to set up a rule for my finance department. Finance has some very sensitive information on the network. I want to be a little bit tighter with my security policy for them. So I'll add them to the source and talk about some of the external uh, directions that they might be going in when they're on the network. Again, this stuff is very easy to move. You can just grab these and drag them into your desired boxes to set your source and desk. You can use these buttons right here. Uh, I'm going to skip the VLAN tags for now, but let's go into the user groups because users are important, right? The Active Directory tie-in is critical here for us to have user awareness. And within our policy, I don't always want to be setting my policy by the network or the zones. I may want to set policy just by users individually, right? So here's a group of users in the finance department that I can add to this rule, or I can go beyond the user group into the individual user. Here's Abigail Flynn, who's a great accountant for us in the accounts payable department. So I could add individual users and set my policy in a completely granular fashion this way. So now if I go into the applications, here's where things get really interesting. The first thing you'll notice here on the left is that we have a lot of different ways that we can classify and categorize and reference groups of applications, whether it's by risk or business relevance or the types or categories. So for example, if I want to set a social media type of, uh, of rule policy here, an application policy, I'll just go down and highlight the social networking box. All of these applications here that are displayed are part of the social networking classification. So you see Facebook and Farmville and Google Plus and LinkedIn here. All of these are great social media sites, some of which we don't want to allow on our network. But it, uh, all I have to do to add all of these in mass would be to grab all of these apps that match this category. And now the whole category of social networking will be applied to set to be blocked for our finance department there. Okay, But what if I want to be a little more light-handed and I want to allow Facebook, but I just don't want anything to go out of my network, right? So maybe specifically with regard to an application, I don't want to be searching for it, but it's very easy to find just by starting to type the name of the application and all the matching results come from the type ahead function here. So again, let's, uh, let's take a deeper look at each of these applications. Facebook is one that we probably know, but all of these sub apps might be something new or something interesting. You have the ability to type on this, uh, click on this information tab here, and we'll pop up a little bit of information about the application itself. So a quick description of the application and some of the tags that it falls within uh, our classifications and categorizations of the application here. You can even, even uh, take a quick jump out to Wikipedia or do a Google search by clicking here and this will launch you to an external web page with those results that will give you a little more information about every application that's out there. So that's pretty nice and handy. Now again, so let's say I want to set a policy that is actually going to prevent outbound communication. So, uh, Facebook in general, I want to be a, uh, able to allow them to view, but I don't want them to be using chat. That would be a way that they could comment on some financial performance or metrics. Uh, Facebook comment would be another one that we'll want to we'll want to block here. I want to allow them to read email for for my purposes right now. It's not going to be any problem for them to read email, but I don't want them to be able to send anything out or create a status update that would convey any information here. So now just add those to the rule, and all of these 
Facebook sub applications will be applied to the users or the networks that I have specified here. Now in addition, I can set my URL policy very easy also by using categories and reputations. If I'm concerned about just creating a, a secure URL filtering policy, I'll just add the high risk sites here and block anything that's a high risk website. But if I want to actually use more of a, an acceptable use policy, then I can actually drill down into the categories. Uh, say for example, add the alcohol and tobacco and it will bring any uh, alcohol and tobacco site into my selected URLs. Right? I could also narrow it down to only alcohol and tobacco sites with a high risk now will only be blocked here as well. I've set my action to block. I can also set it to allow or to trust or just to watch and, and monitor those activities. But let's set to block. We'll enable the rule here and we'll insert the rule in position number nine. Click add and boom we're done. So what I've showed you here is that it's very easy with just a few clicks to be able to specify certain applications and apply policy on a per user or user group basis. Okay, So this will help us reduce our attack surface and ultimately improve the security of the network by limiting the number of applications that are out there on the, on the network. Okay, So if you'd like to learn more about SourceFire's products and technologies, come visit us over at SourceFire.com. We'll be waiting for you. Thanks for listening. Cheers.